Living Power with Dan Hurst. Now, in the Gospel of John, where we, we introduced uh, John the Baptizer, John deals with John the Baptizer and he talks about him. But uh, we have to go to some of the other Gospels to fill in the story to get the whole full picture of it. And so today, we're going to park a little bit in Matthew chapter 3. Because I want you to see something about this third message of John the Baptizer's, the message about judgment. This was a very important message. It was a very important thing for him to speak because that was the call and that was the reason why the Messiah was coming. As far as the Jews were concerned, the Messiah was coming to set up the kingdom, to overthrow the Roman government, to set up a kingdom all over the world, to reign in peace, to bring judgment. So for him to call for judgment fit right in with what they understood. So he's out there in the desert. There are all of these people around him uh, listening to his message. And along come some Pharisees and Sadducees. And we pick it up in Matthew chapter 3. And I want you to see what John the baptizer said. And we'll take a look and study what he said. Beginning with uh, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers. I love that. Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I tell you, God is able from these stones to raise up children for Abraham. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Every tree, therefore, that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. I baptize you with water for repentance. But he who is coming after me is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. And he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand, and he will clear his threshing floor and gather his wheat into the barn, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Those are some powerful words, especially when you're on the receiving end of those words, especially when John the baptizer is looking straight at you saying those things. It's intimidating. And these Pharisees and Sadducees were taking all of this in. It was a warning, if you will. Now remember, the people remembered what was said back in Malachi, the very end of Malachi, the very last prophecy in Malachi, picking up with verse 5 in Malachi 4. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes. And he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with a decree of utter destruction. That was the last word from God until now. 400 years later, now a prophet is saying, the Messiah is coming, the kingdom is at hand, it's time for judgment. Now John's message was very clear. His message was that he was anointed by God to announce the coming of the king, the expected Messiah. And the people began to flock from him from all over the city. And one day, John is there, and he's baptizing, and he's speaking to these people, and he sees these Pharisees and Sadducees show up. Now, the Pharisees and and the Sadducees were the religious leaders of the day. There were actually four groups, four factions, if you will, within the Jewish uh, religious uh, setup. There were the Pharisees, and they were considered the fundamentalists, or the, uh, you know, they were were the, the legalists. And then there were the Sadducees, who were the liberals, then there were the Essenes, who would be considered more like the conservatives, maybe, you know, maybe even moderates, I don't know. But they were very conservative. And then there were the Zealots. And so there were these four factions within the Jewish community, but the two biggest ones were the Pharisees and Sadducees. And they had a council that they, uh, that they had set up. The Pharisees and the Sadducees had this council. It was made up of 70 people. Uh, from Pharisees and Sadducees, and then one chief priest. So there were 71 people in this council. They called it the Sanhedrin. And the Sanhedrin basically ruled over the people from a religious standpoint. They were the ones that implemented and kind of negotiated the laws and kind of were the go-between between between the Roman government and the Jewish people and so forth and so on. And they, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, actually despised each other. They didn't like each other at all. They thought each other's theology was all screwed up, and it was. But they didn't, uh, they didn't like each other, except the one thing they could agree on was to kill Jesus. 
That was the only thing that they ever agreed on. Now they hear that there's this prophet out here in the desert, and he's talking about the coming Messiah. So they go to check this out. Let's go see what's going on. We are the religious people. You'd think if there was a Messiah coming, we would know about it. And so they show up to see John the baptizer and see what's going on. And they, were, they showed up as these arrogant, manipulative, uh, hypocritical liars. Kind of like Congress. They showed up, and that's the way they were. I mean, that's exactly the way. They were hypocritical, manipulative, arrogant liars, but they were sincere. And they thought they were right. And they show up to see what's going on, and John says to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Now, when he says, you brood of vipers, what he's saying is, you family of vipers. What he's saying is, you guys are sons of snakes. You're not just snakes. You're the sons of snakes. You're snakes. And what he was saying to them was that he he wasn't going to take anything off of them. He's just saying, what a bunch of snakes you guys are. Now, the snake that he's comparing them to is this deadly viper that uh, was prevalent in the desert. And whenever there was a fire, and at the, this would happen every harvest time, there were these snakes all over the area, and especially around in the, the farming area in the desert area. And whenever the farmers would set their crops on fire at the end of, of the harvest time to, to, to clear it off and everything, these snakes would just go running. They would scatter. And so there'd be thousands of snakes all over the, these, these, snakes, they, these things were deadly snakes. They're pretty, aren't they? They're just cute little, notice the horns on them, I think. I'm not saying anything, but I just noticed that right away. But anyway, these things would just, would crawl everywhere, and, uh, and everybody knew. They knew what was happening, and they knew what, was, what, what would happen. And so what John was saying was to them was, why are you snakes coming out of your snake holes? Could it be that you sense that there is a fire about to come? That's what he was saying to them. And of course, he's drawing the conclusion or the, or, or the analogy between the fire and judgment. And he's saying, could it be that you are facing judgment and it's time for you to admit who you are and time for you to get ready for the coming Messiah? It's time for you to repent. Us, we're the Pharisees and Sadducees. We don't have to repent. We're already religious. What he was saying to them was, look, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is that the Messiah is about to show up. The bad news is you're not ready to meet him. 